close your eyes Get some rest I'm by your side Lay your head on my chest Check it out, the street light up there doesn't even have the wires hooked up anymore. I don't know if they got a storm or somebody cut them or what, but they're not even hooked up. This here, it reminds me of what they call, I think, a shotgun house, long and narrow. I wonder what it was. Looks like it's abandoned now. I think that's an old hand -to Well, let's take a look what we believe to be an old hay baler sitting by the shotgun house. Another little house that looks abandoned. At one time they had dish TV. Hey Marty, what do you think this is? Well, it's an old grater, but I don't know if John Deere ever produced them, but it's painted green and yellow like John Deere, so. Maybe we've got a couple of Packer fans here in Illinois. No. <laughs> Maybe. Based on the label, I don't think it's an actual John Deere. Looks to be a Russell 10 grader, and it has the factory number 1298. I wonder where factory 1298 was. Might have to look that up online afterwards and see if I can figure that out. But if you happen to know, leave it in the comments section below. There's Marty checking out the old train depot. Clarification, what I assume to be the old train depot based on its location and its design. Because if you look just beyond the trees here, you can see the train tracks. And it's in that typical train depot design. It must be something with the architecture that they've all been basically built like this. I gotta catch up to Marty. He's way ahead of me, Mr. Patience. <laughs> The definition of patience has Marty's picture in the dictionary, if you didn't know. What you looking at? Let your fingers do the walking. Remember that sign? Let your fingers do the walking? Isn't that for the yellow pages? Yep, the old telephone advertising. Whoever it was, at and I don't know who it was. Ma Bell? Yeah, maybe. Hey, sightseer, sightseeing Sally here and... Marty. As you can see, we've been walking around a little town here in northern Illinois known as Buda. Buda or Butta. Parquet Butta. <laughs> Better Butta. <laughs> no, just kidding. It's most likely Buda. Anyways, Buda came upon my radar after looking at one of those only in your state uh, articles that was on the web. And according to that article, Buddha is a living ghost town. Off in the distance you can see the remains of what used to be Buddha feed and milling. Not sure if that building is still in use today, but across from that you can see an old factory that does appear to be still in use. We were initially puzzling over what this building used to be, but I think Marty's figured it out. I was looking at the door and it says Illinois Corn Growers Association. If you look at the side here, you can see a scale, and in the window you can see the actual scale that works the outdoor scale for getting the weight inside. So this probably belongs to the feed mill. So let's go take a look at the window and see if that's what it is. And sure enough in the window, you can see it. That's how they weighed the corn when it came in, or other grains probably too. And you can see the ground here, they drove up all in these wood planks and the guy inside adjusted the scale. Not to mention, on the ground you can see corn. 
And then up ahead is this building here. Marty refers to it as a pizza slice because it's triangular shaped. Some of you might recall when I videoed Crystal Falls, Michigan. Oh, that would have been, I think, last summer. They had a building very similar to that, except theirs was in red brick. Now, here's something you don't find every day when exploring a small town. Under the steps there, you see it, that big stone sharpener? Look at it next to the garbage can. You see how big it is? And look at how wide it is. I wonder what they were sharpening on it that they needed it that wide. Maybe some kind of farm implement blades, or maybe Granny was sharpening her knives. Who knows? Checking out the building where that huge sharpening stone is, We're trying to figure out what it was. Marty's thinking it might have been an old furniture store. And the reason for that is when you peek in through the window, you can see old furniture stacked up inside. Plus, Marty was just pointing out that this wheel that you can see here that reminds me of an old sewing machine is actually... An old wood lathe. And you know this because? My dad had one. There you go. He knows. After talking with one of the locals, we discovered that this building has a colorful history. At one time, it was the town's bank and a car dealership. And yes, at some point, it was a hardware store. It was even a furniture store, just like Marty suspected. Most likely selling Victor Victrolas. Also, after getting a little bit more information on the town, we discovered that the correct pronunciation is... Buda. Not Buda. Even though the town is named after Budapest, it is pronounced Buda. Buda. Located 85 miles southwest of Rockford, Illinois, Buda is a small town or village to be exact in Bureau County, with only a few businesses left in town, including one bar, a gas station, the town's mechanic, and a manufacturing plant that's been around since basically the beginning. Buda is what many consider to be a living ghost town. Established in 1854, Buda got its start thanks to the laying of tracks by the Chicago, Burlington, and Quincy Railroad in the mid-1800s. By 1869, the Branch Railroad, Buda and Rushville, as it was known, came to town. Unlike some of the other small rail towns, though, Buda had the distinction of having a roundhouse at its stop. Interestingly enough, According to the town's historian, Al Capone used to ride the train to Buda where he would get off and get his hair cut during the time it took to turn the train around. Unfortunately, as we found out, both the old train depot and the roundhouse no longer exist. Over here we can see what's left of the old Chevy dealership in town. Unfortunately, it looks like the roof's caving in on it. And then this building you can see was built in 1909. Now here's something that's right up Marty's alley. Some old farm equipment dating back probably to... I would probably say late 50s, early 60s, somewhere in there, if I would guess. I'm not sure, but I'm figuring that's probably what it's from. And if I know Marty, he's probably thinking about how he can convert it into some kind of go-kart. I was thinking that this house looked like a nice little house to move into, except Marty pointed out that the roof was starting to cave in. So maybe not quite move in ready, but for Marty, eh, it would just be another fixer upper. But you look and you're staring pretty intently. What do you see over there? Oh, wow. Check this out. Two old cars from the 50s. Oh, yeah. This has got to be one of the coolest things I've seen so far. That's proof that it pays to keep your eyes open, sightseers. You never know what you're going to end up finding.
What used to be an old grocery store is now the local hangout. And interestingly enough, at one time this town was a dry town. If I remember correctly, one of the locals had said it was up until like the 80s that it had been dry, which is not something that if you're from Wisconsin, you're used to. I just noticed that they have their hours posted here. Looks like if we hang around long enough, we'll be able to go on inside and grab ourselves a cold one. And then next door, you'll find the remains of the old funeral parlor known as Taylor Memorial Chapel. And believe it or not, prior to that, this was the town's ice cream parlor. Step into Buda's Village Hall and Mason Memorial Library, and you can find some interesting relics from the past. Things like the old vault of the bank that used to be here, photos of the town and the people who lived in it, an old wagon crafted by hand, and a seed bin from the old hardware store. We have a correction to make. This building here was not the old train depot. We found out it used to be the town service station. Apparently there used to be like a circle out in front where you could drive up and get your gas pumped. At its peak in the late 1800s, early 1900s, it is believed that Buda had a population nearing 1,500 folks. Now the town has less than 500, with some sources saying closer to 470. One thing you don't see too often is, look at the, I believe it's called, it's a federal brand, and it's an air raid siren or tornado siren. And then in the background next to it is the new one replacing it. You don't see them old ones up very often anymore. This, by the way, is obviously the fire station. Behind me here is the building that used to house the local newspaper. Known as the Buda Plain Dealer, you can still find copies of some of the newspapers that were published back then in the town's library. 1931, January 8th, 1931. One of several churches that used to be here in Buda. At one time, there were enough people here to support the building of five churches. Now you can see what's left of these early churches, some of them having been bought and turned into homes, while others sit empty, basically abandoned. What's left of the old Baptist church here in Buda? If you look close, you can see the stained glass up in the window yet. What's left of the United Methodist Church? If you look closely, you can see that it once said, pray for peace. The former Unitarian Church is now Buda's Community Hall. The early homes in Buda were for the most part built after the New England pattern, white painted with green shutters and enclosed with a fence, white pickets whenever possible. Driving through the residential areas of town, we can see a mix of old and new, with homes empty and abandoned amongst those still lived in. Based on the size of that trunk, you know that tree's got to be as old as the town. One thing you'll notice about Buda is that it has a really nice town park. Look at that. It looks like the type of park I would have enjoyed as a kid. There's even a baseball diamond. I can totally picture myself up at bat, swinging and hitting a home run. Despite being tagged by others as a ghost town, those who call Buda home will continue to do so, and I can see why. If you look past the surface, you will see simply a town that's quiet, off the beaten path, away from the daily stressors associated with big city living. A place where everybody knows everybody, and outsiders, although treated kindly, do not go unnoticed. And that sightseers sometimes just can't be beat.